Campus Party for a special edition of Digital Futures. Developers, entrepreneurs, gamers and hackers, Campuseros as they're called, have descended on the O2 Arena in London for five days of talks, debates and workshops from tech icons running 24-7. Campus Party started 16 years ago with just 250 people attending. Now though, it's the largest electronic entertainment event in the world with over 5,000 campuseros camping out here every single day. We're in one of the gaming zones at Campus Party. We have seven stages and 500 hours of content being produced. So, John, what's your yeah. favorite part of Campus Party? Uh, so far, it's been the inspirational speakers on the main stage. Um, they've said some really, really inspirational stuff, which I can take home with me. And obviously, um, as a UX designer myself, um, as an intern, it's been really, really interesting uh, going all around the whole campus party, really. So what's the highlight of campus party for you, Laura? I think the inspirational speakers, again, because I'm a physicist, so I, learn to, I love to learn new things. The atmosphere is absolutely electric. We pinned down some amazing tech influencers to get their take on campus party and innovation in Europe. So what I really like about campus party is just this amazing vibe of digital culture. Lots of hackers, makers, remixers, people coming in and it's not just consuming technology but actually creating technology and making it their own. My experience at Campus Party has been pretty ex exciting. I am really inspired by all of the university students here that are willing to learn, who are actually learning new things. A lot of times, I come from Silicon Valley, everybody thinks they know everything, and here it's just inspiring to see that people want to learn and also people want to share. So I'm leaving this place completely energized. One of the things I like about Campus Party is it's not only about the technology, but it's also about entrepreneurship. It's about how to create a business. It's encouraging people to go out, these young people to go out and create their own businesses. And I think that that's a really great thing. And the other thing is it's, it's an increasing number of women coming here. When I first started doing Campus Party 10 years ago, it was 99.99% guys, you know. And then every once in a while, they would bring along their girlfriends. And then all of a sudden, about three or four years ago, it started to be the girls would be coming and bringing along their boyfriends. And I think that that's a good thing, too. I think technology has a bit of a, a, a bad image, I guess, amongst women as an industry as well. Women need to see role models, but they need to see that they can succeed within technology. They need to not just see women at the top, but see women at all levels, see women well represented, and see a diversity of women as well. In my experience in working in the tech industry, female executives tend to compete more than collaborate with each other. And they sort of isolate themselves because the, they have such dedicated focus to climbing up that executive ladder that they don't have time for anything else. And this is a huge issue because the younger generation, they don't have those role models, those women to teach them the best practices, to sort of serve as sponsors, to help them in, in getting those connections, networking, learning sort of the rules of the road. Yeah, so it's very exciting to see in the 21st century, women in leadership roles, starting their own companies, managing Silicon Valley's giants like Facebook and uh, Yahoo and Google, for example. But I really want to see more of such women, and not just in Silicon Valley. Here in Europe and in the Middle East or in Southeast Asia, I think uh, society and especially the conventional perceptions of women's role need to adapt, adjust, realize that it is the 21st century and gender doesn't need to play a role in career choices. How do ideas flow through society? That's really fundamental. Not money, not facts, not things like that. So what needs to happen is some sort of translation from the very mathematical description of behavior uh, using these big data resources to things that people can use to reason about what to do in their daily life. And that's happening. So if you look at the role of tech, you've got this extraordinary stuff going on with the smart microgrid. If you look at Austin, Texas, Jiju Korea, a project that I'm working on in Brixton with Brixton Energy and the repowering. It's about putting power back into the hands of local people. So to get more people involved in tech, more young people involved in tech, I think it's the same problem that needs solving across a lot of industries. And I think the solution across all of them is, is communication. 
People don't know what they want to do with their lives unless they know what there is to do. And if you can communicate to people how fruitful a career where you're a creative person is, it's, it's, an, easy, it's an easy sell. Currently the education system doesn't teach as much technology as I would like it because we have a, in school we have this big computer room but nobody really uses it and it's just used for like Word, PowerPoint, Excel and in Ireland there's a huge job decrease and the majority of jobs are in technology and programming and so I've tried to get it into schools and it's going really well. Europe has a history of the grand old men saying this will be the policy and then we do various things. Well, there needs to be lots more voices. Some of the voices will be wrong, but the way you win in the end is you have lots of different approaches, and those evolve always over time, and you water the ones that are growing. Part of the problem today is a lot of these kids uh, think that all computer science comes from either Redmond, Washington, or Silicon Valley. And right here in London, you, you have things like the Babbage Difference Engine, and you have you know, the, the EDZAC computer was done, and the Colossus out of Bletchley Park, and the rich history of computer science that came from England and the rest of Europe, you know. And I think that that's very important for them to understand. So I think Digital Europe definitely needs to kind of loosen up a little bit, probably invest a little bit more in technology at all levels. So it's not just in education or within health or kind of getting kids to code, but it's also having adults have an appreciation of digital and what digital can do. To build a Digital Europe and make it a strong contender, all the building blocks are there. We've got the money, we've got the talent, we've got the ideas. Look, just look at the innovation that's coming out of England particularly. Why are all the Formula One teams based in England? Because we are amazing engineers. This is something that we need to realize that we are very good at things, and it's there. I think we just need to have, take away, de-risk being an entrepreneur, and encourage people to be an entrepreneur is the key one. Starting at home, be, it should be a job choice, not something you do if everything else has failed. That, for me, is one of the key things. The one constant that I'm hearing from young entrepreneurs here at Campus Party is this greater need or desire to learn about what it takes to be successful and then also how to define success. I find it pretty fascinating because everybody has a great idea that's here. Everybody's working towards something that's brilliant. And I believe that this excitement that is all over Campus Party, when someone's willing to learn and ask the right questions, which I'm getting a lot of great questions, then you're actually setting the stage for a brilliant new wave of entrepreneurship. It's very interesting to look at Europe as perhaps sometimes behind Silicon Valley. I don't actually think that is the case. I think if you look around Europe's cities, especially places like London, like Barcelona, like Berlin, you'll see a vibrant digital culture of startups just rising from that maybe 19th, 20th century vibe of old Europe. And it's exciting. I think Europe is definitely going to be at the forefront of digital culture in the years to come. It's really non-stop action here at Campus Party. Shivi's fiddling with a robotic arm, and I've been gaming all day. I'll try not to hit you with that. So, these two guys here have created this nifty little device right here at Campus Party. It's been an absolutely phenomenal experience. This is Digital Futures. Thank you for watching.